In this lesson, we're going to take a look at defining reflections. So in your student workbook, you'll see that you have a which one doesn't belong for these crossing lines here. So just take a second to look at it, decide what you think about which one doesn't belong, and take some time to um, formulate a justification for why you're choosing the one you're choosing. You may choose um, figure one because you see that there's no right angle here. So these two lines are not perpendicular, the only ones that are not perpendicular. Figure two, maybe you chose because it's the only figure that L is not bisecting AB, so it's not splitting it in half. You saw it has two different numbers here. Maybe you chose figure three um, because it goes from, it's the only one that doesn't have A and B as the endpoints. It has C and C prime, but still um, has the 90 degree angle in the bisector, but just C and C prime are different. And figure number four, um, maybe you chose this one because it's the only perpendicular bisector that also has A and B as the endpoints. So it's the only one that's got A, B, and perpendicular with the bisector. Could have been other reasons. Those are just a couple um, to get you started. In class today, we also signed up for the Delta Math website. So if you will go into Schoology, into your geometry course, um, and then click Delta, the Delta Math link. We actually did um, Lesson 11 Reflections instead of doing the 11.2 in your student workbook. So Schoology, Geometry, there's a Delta Math link that will sign you up for your teacher's course and then complete the Lesson 11 Reflections on Delta Math. So let's do a quick review of reflections from lesson 10 of what we noticed in lesson 10 about reflections. So if you remember, this was that warm up that we had yesterday um, or in lesson 10, whenever that was. And when we connected the image, the pre-image or original figure to the image, so A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime, all of those lines are parallel. They are also perpendicular to the line of reflection that it's flipping over. Also, the pre-image, okay, or the original figure is the same distance from that line of reflection as its image. So A to the line of reflection is the same distance as A prime to the line of reflection, or same with B to B prime, okay, and C um, to C prime, and that line of reflection. So when we're doing this next activity, so lesson 11.3, okay, um, let's take a look at um, what Chiron did, okay? So they're giving us this image in your student workbook, and that is on page 77. So this is page 77 in your workbook. And so it says Chiron ref um, started reflecting triangle CDE, so this triangle across the line. So far he knows the image of D is D prime and the image of E is E prime. So he's already gotten this. We know he's correct on getting E prime and D prime. The last thing that he needs to do is get C prime. So we're going to annotate the diagram, which means mark it up, okay, or write on the diagram to show. And how, he's, how he reflected point D. And then we're going to use our compass and straight edge moves to determine the location of C. So first we're going to first we're going to redo D just to see how he did it. So remember the things that we know. We know that when we connect D to D prime that this is going to be perpendicular to line M. So if we remember back to last unit when we're constructing perpendicular lines off of a point, okay? So we need to open up this compass and draw a circle, and let me make sure what my, let me make sure this isn't too thick of a line, let's do this. Um, so then we're gonna open up into a circle that goes from point D and crosses the line that we need it to be perpendicular to twice. So when you do this in your notebook, if yours doesn't, like if you need to extend line M, feel free, so you can lay your straight edge on and extend it. 
So once we've drawn a circle that crosses line M twice, then we're gonna open our compass to the width of the intersection and draw two more circles. So draw a circle around each intersection point. And then when we connect this, when we connect those um, intersections, we'll have a perpendicular line. So when we connect intersection to intersection, and then you'll see that point D, let me get this. So if I extend this through the intersection, so we've got D on the intersection. So how did we figure out where D prime was? We opened up to see how far D was away because remember they need to be the same distance. So D is the same distance from the line of reflection as D prime. So set your compass on the line and on D and then you'll be able to just flip the compass over to see where D prime would go and put a dot there. Okay, so we construct the perpendicular line, then open our compass from D to the line of reflection and then move it so we can figure out where D prime would go. So pause the video and do that for C and then you can come back and I will walk you through it. So again, we start by drawing a circle centered at C that goes through this line. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit skinnier of a line. Okay, so we'll draw a, comp uh, draw a circle that goes through, and you can do the whole circle if you want to. You just only need the intersections, so I just kind of stop so that my diagram doesn't get so overwhelming. Then we're gonna open our compass to the width of this intersection. and draw two more circles, one around each intersection. So centered at this intersection, draw a circle, centered at this intersection, draw a circle. Connect those with a line, that'll be our perpendicular line. Okay, so then we'll be able to decide where C prime is going to go. So remember, C prime should be the same distance as C is from M. So if we open this up and check how far C is from the line of reflection on this perpendicular line, okay, so here's C to the perpendicular line, or sorry, C to the line of reflection to line M, and then move our compass over, we'll be able to find out where C prime would go. So then here's where C prime is. So we've got E prime, D prime, C prime. So then you'd be able to connect these to get that new triangle. So E prime to D prime, D prime to C prime, C prime to E prime. And that's gonna be the reflection there. So then you can write a set of instructions on how to reflect any point across a given line. So construct a perpendicular line so you could write out all of the instructions for that. So set your compass on the point you're trying to reflect. Draw a circle that intersects the line you're reflecting over. Open your compass to the width of that intersection. Draw a circle around each intersection. Connect your intersections. And then measure how far it is from the line. All right, so then in this one, it says Elena found C incorrectly. So found C prime incorrectly. So here's the one that she's um, reflecting is this one over. Elena's convinced that triangle CDE looks fine. Explain to Elena why C prime is not the reflection of C. Okay, so one thing we know when we look at this, we can tell it's not correct because this triangle and this triangle are not the same shape or not the same size. Okay, so how are you gonna explain to her that it's wrong? So one thing you could do is connect E to E prime, D to D prime, and then C to C prime. Okay, and we could look and we can see, then you can either open your compass, 
okay, to see how far C and C prime are from the line. So it looks like this is much longer, or sorry, that C to the line is much shorter than this. And you could do that with your compass. So you could open it up and just check how far it is. Okay, so you could just open this compass out, see how far C is away. Remember, they have to be the exact same distance, but along a perpendicular line. Okay, so one thing you can see here is that's definitely not the same distance. Okay, the, the C, C prime to the line of reflection is much longer. Okay, another thing you could do is actually construct the perpendicular line. So you could actually go ahead here and construct a perpendicular line by drawing a circle through that line. Okay, getting the two intersections, opening your compass to the width of the intersection, drawing your circles around each one. Connecting that intersection. Let me just change the color here. We'll do a blue one. So this is the actual perpendicular line. And we can see that the line that Elena has is not perpendicular to this blue line or to this line of reflection. So the blue one is the actual perpendicular line, hers is not. So a couple different ways you could um, go about that. Another way would be to be saying that these that this black line connecting C to C prime is not parallel to these other two. So all of those lines would need to be parallel as well. Um, all right, so synthesis of this lesson. So in order to prove the, um, whether a conjecture, remember, which is a guess that we've made is true, we need a precise definition of reflection. So what exactly does reflection mean? So remember that a reflection is, design, is um, defined using a line, okay? So the reflection is, is this kind of this line. How do we reflect? It's taking one point to another point. That's the same distance. Okay, so when we go from this point to this point, let me get a different color here. When we reflect A over line M, the reflection takes one point to another point, the same distance from the line of reflection, and distance is always the perpendicular line. Okay, so it's on the other side of the line, so that this, um, segment from the original point to the line of reflection, so this part is the same distance as this one on a perpendicular line. So that's what we need to see for reflections. And then when we're thinking about doing a reflection, okay, so if we wanna reflect point A across L, then we need to actually construct the perpendicular line. Okay, so construct a perpendicular line from A to the line, the line of reflection, then measure the distance from A to the line of reflection on your constructed line right here. So we would measure how big this distance is. And then that would help us figure out where A prime is, but it's gotta be along that perpendicular line. So we need to construct the perpendicular line, then do the measurement. Um, all right, so again, just looking at some of these reflections. So if we draw, like this would be the center of a circle. So once you've gotten that reflection drawn, some things to think about. So if you're kind of thinking about all the things we've done, these would be the same distance away, right? So A and A prime are the same distance away from the line of reflection. So if you set your compass right there on where the where A to A prime's line segment intersects the line of reflection, you could draw a circle and it would go through both of those points since they're equidistant away from that line of reflection. So there's a couple of things to think about connecting some ideas there. All right, and then your learning targets for this lesson were that you could describe a reflection by specifying the line of reflection. Okay, so what's the line of reflection? So here we had A was reflected, A was reflected over line L. So that's your line of reflection to A prime. And then also that you can draw reflections.